Teachers of Reddit. What's the saddest thing you've ever found out about a student? I taught preschool. Three year olds. I got a new student who was in her grandparents care because she had been molested up head by her mother's boyfriend. She had all kinds of issues. Obviously. Because she didn't know how to comprehend what happened to her and how to deal with it. She was so damn smart. And funny. And great. But at the same time had violent outbursts. Hearing a 3 year old try to describe sx acts that happened to her was one of the most devastating experiences of my life. 7th grade student lost an older brother to a drive by. After a few months I was told they had lost two other siblings the same way a few years earlier in elementary school. Three years down the line and his name was in the local newspaper for killing an 11th grade boy for his gang. That year I had the 11th grade boy's little sister in my class. One 6th grader told me his father killed his puppy by putting it in the dryer. Another student was living in a four-man tent with her mother and two dogs for months. They put it in a hole with chicken wire around it to keep the dogs from getting out. They ended up going through Hurricane Irene like that. I currently have another 6th grader in need of a place to live because his mom is a drug addict who can't take care of him. She also blames him for DCF investigating because he mentioned his home life to his therapist. My stepdad killed my cat by shooting in the head when I was 11. Because it pooped in the house on the floor. And they didn't tell me for a week. At one point I stood outside for 2 hours in the cold shaking a can of pound streets because the can said if you shake it. Work in a high poverty region. And one of my special ed kids was up head by her mom's boyfriend while the mom held her still. The reasoning was to get her pregnant since she was almost 18 so she could draw all check. I literally want to vomit after reading that. Some people do not deserve to live. I had a very smart kid failing my class because he wasn't turning in any homework. When I asked him why he told me he lived in a hotel room with 12 other people. There wasn't space. And it was too loud for him to focus. Colon. I remember in like 5th grade there was a girl in my class who always smelled bad and I didn't like her because of it. Six years later I was bicycling on the local rail trail with some friends and we stopped at an old abandoned paper mill. There were some old abandoned box cars there and we started looking in them. I saw homework from the smelly girl. Dating back to 5th grade. Apparently they'd been homeless and living in a box car. I felt really shtty for how I'd been to her after that. I had a student. 16. Who would stay after school with me on Fridays and offer to help out in my classroom. She wasn't a particularly good student and didn't seem to like me. So I never understood why she stuck around. The following school year. Her mother got arrested for prostituting her three daughters. Including this student. I wish she had said something or I had thought to ask questions. My mom is a public school teacher. She has told me some super sad stories about her students. At least three a year. One kid had some disease where he had really brittle bones. He was in a wheelchair she said it would break her heart because he would say that he just wanted to be a normal boy. To run and play like the other boys. She has a little girl in her class this year. Her mother was a drug addict. Her father was trying to break the mom of her addiction by I guess locking her up in a room. While the drug dealer showed up to get his money the dad answered the door. Him and the dealer started arguing. He shot her dad while the little girl was holding his hand. It seems like every year she has super sad stories. When I taught second grade. I had a student who walked kind of funny. It took me about a week to realize that it was because his shoes were too small. I got him some new shoes at Kmart because kid shoes are cheap. I told him it was so he would be able to run really fast in gym class. I found out he was living with his grandma because his dad was in prison for killing his mom. I started buying him clothes after that. At the end of the school year. I was packing up some boxes and one of them said snacks. The boy looked at me with great big eyes and asked if I really had snakes in the box. I cried over the fact that I promoted a kid to third grade who really couldn't read. Not a teacher. But I volunteered in an after school program that cured kids. My group was 14-15 years old. 
So. I have this extremely bright kid in my group. When we talk about anything else it was clear that he was super smart. When we did homework together he was doing great. And understood everything perfectly. He even helped the other kids. However he would fail every single one of his tests. And not just a few mistake here and there. On a few subject. No. He totally completely falling every classes. It didn't make sense at all. So there had to be something else going on. I talked to my supervisor about it. And he promised me to look into it. Turn out his older brother had been held back and they were in the same classes. The father would eat up the younger one every time he had better marks than his older brother. Because Yeo was making the true heir look bad. Another student was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's a disease wherein the muscles turn to jelly from the legs up. People with this disease live up to about only their teen years. Up until their breathing muscles hold out. He was 7 then. One student I treated had bone cancer. He had his leg amputated and that's why I was teaching him exercises for his stump and prepping him for his new leg. He said he wanted to be a meteorologist. Two years ago I found out that another tumor grew on him but that time. His head. He died shortly after that. We had a student get adopted by a great aunt. CPS had found the girl when she was 5 locked in a closet with one older brother and one younger brother. She was always so sad or insanely angry. She was often non-verbal. Eventually. We figured out that there had been a younger sister who had died in the closet. CPS and the aunt confirmed the story. When the littlest one was born. The girl I knew had done her best to take care of the baby. But baby just couldn't drink that Kool-Aid. I'm not the teacher. I'm the kid. When I was a kid I was abused. A few teachers would realize it. Anyways. I never had lunch at school, and I didn't qualify for free lunch, because my mom didn't care enough to make sure I ate. I was probably one of the skinniest, least nourished kids in the school. A teacher found out that my mom just wouldn't give me lunch and food at home was scarce. So she bought me lunch every day I was at school for two years. I looked like the home alone kid so the way I repaid her was to do the aftershave scream face to make her laugh. She said laughter was a form of payment. Since I refused to take free food she had paid for. I found out she was used as a human shield when her father was arrested for murdering her mother. 7 years old. That the reason that my grade 12 student was falling asleep during math class was because he was working 40 hours a week to pay his parents bills. I saw his pay stub. He was a great kid too. This was several years ago. When I was still new to classroom teaching. I noticed a boy in my class was extremely quiet and reserved. Despite my efforts to engage him. He rarely spoke in class and, while he had a few friends, never seemed to be as demonstrative or exuberant as the other kids his age, even during play. I knew he had a younger brother. So one morning I asked his brother's teacher what he was like. She grimaced. Oh. Oh geez. She said. I'm sorry you hadn't heard about them. She then told me about how the boy's father had been a drunken abuser. And about the day the mother threatened to leave and take the boy and his brother with her. And how the dad then dragged them all into their front yard and blew the mother's head off with a shotgun before doing the same to himself. Right in front of the kids. The oldest was in first grade at the time and had to make the 911 call. Never had a kid with a worse story before or since. One of my students got diagnosed with stage 4 neuroblastoma cancer at the age of 5 through his bones and all. His mother was a single mother and he is the only child. After a year and a half of heavy heavy chemotherapy and non-stop hospital stays he is finally cancer free. Still going for radiation every couple weeks or so. Whenever I'm feeling down about the little things. I think of what this 5 year old boy and his mother had been through and are still going through. I had a student who lived at the homeless shelter. She was an A student. Super nice kid. And had a baby. Her mom came into the shelter drunk and got them all kicked out. Another student. 
Also an A student and just the nicest person told us that she couldn't go to her senior prom because her mom couldn't pay the electric bill. So all of her money that she worked for had to go to paying bills instead of a dress. The teachers pitched in and helped her go. Because if anyone deserved a nice prom, it was her. A student disappeared for a few weeks. I found out later she tried to kill herself. Her mother's boyfriend had been upping her every night for years. She never came back to school. A classmate was repeatedly uphead by her stepdad. Everyone found out when she killed him. I was a teacher's aide in high school for the special ed kids. One of the adult aides confessed to us that one of our students mothers couldn't handle that her kid wasn't acting like most boys is ajka that he wasn't trying to get in girls pants. The mom was evidently calling hookers for her son and when they'd show up she'd help him touch them. To my knowledge CPS was called. No idea how it ended. Edited calls people want more info. The kid was probably 15. A sophomore I think. It was 10 years ago. And he was severely mentally disabled. Enough that he needed his diapers changed. Was non-verbal. And pretty much couldn't move at all unassisted. Please excuse my lack of tact. I shouldn't have even posted this. Anyway. Facts are in this case that what the parent was doing was wrong seeing as how the kid was not able to consent in any way. Teacher's assistant here. The elementary school I work in has a 53% free and reduced lunch population. A first grade teacher noticed that one of the Hispanic non-English speaking kindergartners would come to school wearing oversized. Beat up sneakers. With her own money. She went out and bought a pair of sneakers and a couple of pairs of Spiderman socks for him, she took a guess at his size. Being a mom. She had a good idea. Close bracket. He loved his new sneakers but didn't know what socks were. He asked her what they were for. She had to explain what they were used for and help him put them on. Boy. Did his face light up. Preschool. Yeah fun times. Noticed a girl with clear behavioral issues come to school on Monday in her Friday outfit. She's covered in filth. Even her hair has food stuck in it. Give her a clean up of paper towels and warm water. Have my assistant change her clothes. Mail here. Miss K does that, and wrote a report for documentation. Just in case. I come back from my lunch break and protective services has already come in and taken her away. I'll never see her again or know what was going on. All I know is that mom had weekend rights. Makes me sad still. It also makes me continue to write those reports. Preschool is fun. I'll tell a story a teacher friend of mine told me. And it really messed with me. She had this little girl in her class who was known to act out a lot so they'd gotten used to knowing how to settle her down etc. One day she seemed to be extra difficult and when they sent the kids off for lunch. The girl came up to the teacher and clung to her leg asking if she could have some food. Turns out she'd been sent to school with no lunch or money. She also hadn't had any breakfast. Oh. Ordinary the night before. I really really hate people being hungry. It upsets me more than most things and the thought of this little girl starving and not understanding why nobody would feed her messed with me for days. And it still gives me a horrible feeling now when I remember it. Science teacher here. Was doing a unit on genes. Had students do a pun at square for their blood types with their parents. Student came to me with a problem. Her blood type didn't reconcile with her father's. I asked if she was sure and she was. So I told her she should ask her parents about it. At the end of the unit she told me she was was the product of rape. It put her on a downward path and led to a lot of fights and her parents splitting. I lost track of her when she moved to high school. TL. DR Science Lab turned into a lifetime movie. Edit. Yes. Redditors. We don't do that lab anymore. My dad's high school bio class had a similar problem girl's blood type didn't match either parents. Her teacher made a huge deal about her lying because your parents blood types don't make yours. Turns out the girl was adopted and her parents didn't want to tell her. I subbed at a public school in the Philippines. The district I was assigned to accepted students from low income families. Nearly every student due to financial issues have a sad tale to tell. 
The sad ones are physical abuse from family or guardians. Some who stop school altogether to help support the family by working odd jobs. These are kids between 10 and 13 years who would stop coming to class so they can find work or help out with their parents. Other work menial jobs both day and night like picking up garbage and cans to trade for a few pesos. The saddest are those victims of abuse both physical and ethical. Or those who turn to the life of being a criminal because they have no other choice. They often ask me some of these kids. How can they be like me and get a job? I always tell them. Stay in school. If they can aim for a scholarship for college and be good. Wife used to be an elementary school teacher. She had a student who was buried alive by his mother in an attempted murder. But CPS ultimately decided it was better for the kid to remain with family, I, E, his mother, than be placed in a foster home. Same kid also needed medicine for ADHD. But never had it because the same mother always used the pills herself. I had a student with severe depression and a really crappy home life. Her mom was more interested in partying and sleeping around than being a mom. To prevent her daughter from telling anyone what was going on. The mom told her that she would be taken from her family. Locked in a padded room. Drugged so she couldn't walk. And kept in a mental hospital for the rest of her life if she told anyone anything. And the kid was terrified. Fortunately. We found a drawing explicitly expressing suicidal thoughts and were able to get her the help she needed before she attempted. We also reported her mom for neglect and the kid was placed with other family members in a more stable situation. I'm tired of parents acting like they have full authority to do whatever the FCK they want to their kids. Also. Had a student's father die of a sudden and unexpected heart attack. Student was in class next day. Pulled him over and checked in. He said home is too sad. I just need normal today. Mommy was a meth addict who was in and out of jail. And daddy came to pick up reeking of pot and referring to mommy as that bitch to his son. And no idea what he was seeing at home. But he was pervy towards the little girls. This is a 4 year old trying to sneak in the bathroom with them multiple times. Making inappropriate gestures. Asking if they wanted to see his privates or if he could see theirs. 1. A student. At the top of his class. Committed suicide. He would get so anxious about tests. 2. Countless students moved into psychiatric care. 3. A student who was homeless and expectant father trying to graduate after dropping out 2x. That one ended well. But it was shaky for a bit. Mother was dying of breast cancer. All she wanted to do was make it to her son's graduation. She didn't make it. I was in a class in middle school where we had to write a short piece on what we'd wish for. One of my classmates had wrote a really good one about how he'd wish his sister didn't die in a house fire when he was very young. The teacher went up to his desk and she hugged him. I would have too because that shit was real. Yo. I really feel that. My brother just perished in a house fire with his dog last week. His whole house is gone. Every single thing he owned. I feel so guilty that there was nothing I could do and I wish we were closer. Got his name tatted on my calf. Didn't have a mean bone in his body. Love you bro. I only have his earrings and pictures of him and that's it. Not a teacher. But when I was in the 8th grade we had a little buddy in kindergarten where we accompanied them to church, it was a catholic school, and also did activities with them. I got this little blonde hair kid with glasses named Jesse and he was quite the handful. Didn't really seem to get along with the other kids and was always acting out. At first he was tough to try and keep in line. Especially at church. But after a while he seemed to take a real liking to me and started listening. We started getting along great and had a lot of fun drawing and coloring together. One day I got to meet his mom before school started. She handed me a present, it was the latest Harry Potter book, and thanked me for being such a great buddy to Jesse. Apparently his dad left them and he took it really hard. Which was why he was always acting out. She said that she noticed a change and thinks that me being so nice to him had a lot to do with it because he would talk about me to her.